Hi, this is Chris Crawford from Downstream to Wellness Capstone Method. Today I want to talk about uh, a couple of techniques that we've derived out of the uh, structural integration system and a system called uh, Muscle Energy that was developed by an osteopath uh, named Fred Mitchell Sr. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take a couple of techniques that are kind of um, customized out of this uh, philosophy and apply it to a back problem that we identified in the first part of the uh, series, Anatomy of a Back Problem. Kind of give you an idea how you might um, use different styles of work to, uh, to help with that facet joint um, problem that we described that would be responsible for back pain. So uh, it's a fun video, hope you enjoy it. Let's get a skeleton and take a look at the uh, anatomy. All right, today we're gonna be working lower on the spine, but I'm gonna use this a little bit higher um, up in the thoracic, it's easier to see the structures. But we'll be down at uh, L3, L4. There'll be a facet joint stuck closed here. And this is the uh, soft tissue pattern that would accompany that. Uh, between the two transverse processes, there's a very deep muscle called the inner transverse. Uh, and what we're going to do is do a kind of a modified muscle energy and some um, fascial work to get some length in this muscle. On the opposite side of this transverse, going down. Um, one, two, three, and sometimes four segments, about a thumb width apart, there's some multifidus, and that'll be part of the rotational pattern over here. And I'm gonna show you some kind of a modified muscle energy technique and uh, some stuff out of structural integration for that. And then the last thing, there's a situation that's not related to the facet joint, but between these uh, tips of the spinous processes on both sides, there's um, interspinalis muscles. And what happens, uh, if these shorten, instead of this vertebrae being able to tip forward and the one below it in flexion as the facet joints open, if this becomes tethered, then the two vertebral bodies become almost like a nutcracker. And as the person goes forward in flexion, it'll crush this disc. Um, it'll be much, it'll be kind of hinged more so like this. So um, as the person bends, uh, it would compress that disc, and I'm going to show you a treatment for that. So we're going to get a model and go ahead and take a look at that stuff. All right, our model today is Cynthia, and we were going to show, first of all, the interspinalis technique. Um, now what I've determined is this is L4, L3. If Cynthia just starts to go forward slightly, uh, my left thumb rides up, so that, come on back up, Cynthia, that means that she's got closed facet joint here. So remember the inner transverse soft tissue is going to be shortened here and then the multifidus on this side going from the spinous two or three or even four down about a fingers width out from the spinous process is going to be short. We're going to get that with Cynthia laying down in a second. But the inner spinous technique, if I was to put my finger on one spinous process and then the one above and have Cynthia go forward. Come on back up. Those two points <clears throat> move away from each other. If they didn't move, <clears throat> then we're getting that nutcracker type of situation where the disc is being compressed. So to treat this, we'll use a modified muscle energy um, technique. And what I'm gonna do is I will block the lower spinous process. I will put my thumb underneath the tip of the one above and I'll ask Cynthia just slightly to go forward and hold right there and then what I would have her do is lean back and put a little pressure into this point right here Cynthia for 1001, 1002, 1003 and then I'll have her go a little bit farther forward until I feel the motion stop hold right there I'm holding this down I'm right underneath the top one of L3. Just slightly lean back into this pressure for 1001, 1002, 1003, and then slightly go forward. <clears throat> now, I could augment that by getting a tip of a finger in here and just sliding it up in this tissue on skin to get a release of that inner spinalis. And then what I would do is, come on back up, Cynthia. I would keep checking until these two fingers spread apart as Cynthia goes forward in flexion. Excellent. So <clears throat> she doesn't have that problem that that's how you would use kind of a modified muscle energy technique with a fascial release. 
to solve that. Now the inner transverse shortness on this side, that's a very, very deep muscle. So we're going to, again, try to use kind of a combination muscle energy and a fascial release for that as well. So what I'd want to do is I'd want to find the transverse process of L4 and basically <clears throat> as Cynthia side bends left, it's going to want to pop up like this. So I'm going to go underneath of it and support it so it's not able to pop up. Come on back to center there, Cynthia. She's anticipating. She's so <laughs> smart and such a good model. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come underneath the one above it and as Cynthia slowly side bends to the left, I'm going to support the one below, L3, L4, sorry, and then follow this one up. And then I'm going to have Cynthia just slightly lean back into this thumb for 1001, 1002, 1003. And then she's going to slowly lean away to the left. There we go. And I take up the slack again, keeping this one from. Now, what I can also do <clears throat> is I can get a finger in that space and just do a nice slow fascial release to try to make a little space between those transverse processes. That's how you would use a combination of a muscle energy um, and a fascial release to first of all address the um, inner spinous shortness or the inner transverse shortness. So I'm going to have um, Cynthia lay down and we'll go ahead and show you how we would release these multifidus with some uh, structural integration theory and principle. All right, now we're going to address the multifidus um, that Cynthia has a stuck facet joint over here on the right. So the multifidus is going to be fingers width away. It's going to be shortened. The most superficial fascia um, layer of that multifidus will go right down to the transverse below it, but the rest will become more superficial and go down um, three, and I'm, I'm going to take it right down to the sacrum. So with structural integration, one of the concepts that Dr. Roth had is that if you want to lengthen connective tissue, what you do is you take the tissue to the anatomically correct position, in this case it will be a, a more lengthened state, and ask for, for movement. So to feel where these multifidus are, I'm going to put a hand on um, Cynthia's scalp, scapula and have her lightly push back into it, and that should cause those multifidus to pop up and I can feel the ropiness of them right here. So I might even have her rotate a little bit back towards me and now they're really popping up. I'm going to come in with a couple of fingertips, drop down to the level that I want to release, and then what I'll have Cynthia do is slowly rotate away from me. And what I'm feeling for is that connective tissue melting like taffy heating up underneath my fingertips. And again, I'm going to follow down right over the base of the sacrum. And come back, Cynthia. And what I would do <clears throat> is I would make a couple of passes with that technique until the point when I apply this pressure and have it rotate slightly back towards me again, Cynthia. I would be looking for when that ropiness starts to soften and that connective tissue starts to lengthen. The multifidus is part of the rotation pattern of this um, stuck facet joint. So what we've done is address both of the soft tissue components of that stuck facet. I'm going to show you one more technique in just a second. All right, so one last thing. Remember this facet joint is stuck closed. And what we want to do is I put Cynthia in a position where she's almost in fetal position. Uh, and that's basically asking that joint to open. Now what I'm going to do is start a little bit below the facet joint, pin the skin here, drop in to I can press all the soft tissue. And again, I'm going to make a nice slow pass 
right up through the area where that facet joint would be. But what I also might do is I might have Cynthia just slightly lift your head up like as if you were to be looking up. Um, there, there you go. And then when I tell you, just go ahead and slowly drop your chin towards your chest. That's great. And so what I would do is I would apply all these techniques <clears throat> and then I'd have Cynthia sit back up and again I would check that joint to make sure it was now working. The reason why you would add these soft tissue components is because uh, if I just do a muscle energy or a mobilization of that joint, the soft tissue might still be almost like a shrink wrap around that area and would tend to pull it back into that position. Once you release that, it makes the, the, the release uh, complete. Now, <clears throat> one thing about working with a joint like this, if I was to take Cynthia and have her on her back, take the heel and straighten her, straighter, straight, straight her leg up um, to stretch her hamstrings, I would be using her leg as a lever, a bone as a lever to actually stretch soft tissue. So what we're doing is we're not actually working on the joint, we're actually using uh, the bones as a lever to release soft tissue, which in turn actually affects the joint. So according to your scope of practice, that's very important not to, to exceed your limitations of your uh, or boundaries of your practice. So um, these were techniques that you would use um, if you were a client, you have a back problem, you're looking for a therapist, you might want to call a potential therapist and interview them to see if they do uh, any type of muscle energy or if they do uh, soft tissue fascial work um, that would enhance or help release facet problems. So I hope you enjoy these techniques. Um, any questions, please contact us at Downstream to Wellness Capstone Method and we'll have some more videos coming out to it for you soon. Thanks again.